Astronomy is the study of basically the stars and the universe. It's important because it provides context. We live on a planet which is only very small compared to the size of the universe and it would be unfortunate if we constrained ourselves to look simply at the planet we were on when uh, there's a whole big universe out there waiting to be discovered. My name's Teal Bridstra. Uh, I'm an amateur astronomer. I'm also a student of astronomy studying a postgraduate degree, uh, a Masters of Science uh, majoring in astronomy with Swinburne University. Personally, I think astronomy is um, important because society is built on science and technology these days. And I think astronomy can play a really good role in getting people enthusiastic about science and astronomy. It's the one science that I can think of where uh, amateurs can take part in it, plus there's pretty pictures. You know, you've got the Hubble images and these days um, more and more images coming from ground-based telescopes as well. My first telescope was one bought for me by my parents uh, when I was quite young. As most well-meaning parents do, they, they go and get you yeah, a refractor telescope on a tripod, uh, which is quite cheap and doesn't give you the, the best view. Not what I would consider the best beginner telescope. I don't think I'm any different from most people who have an interest in astronomy. It's not an uncommon story for people when they're young to be fascinated by it. And I think as they go up through school, people tell them, oh, you know, there's, no one does astronomy, you know, you've got to be top of the class. And, and as people get older, they get to, you know, maybe 20s or 30s, and then they gradually rediscover, like, why aren't I doing something about this? In terms of things to look at through the telescope, I have a number of favourites. Certainly, the moon is highly underrated uh, because it's one of the few things where you can actually get a sense that it's spherical and you know large and you can see surface features. The one that always draws the, the gasps from people is Saturn. Uh, every time I show Saturn through a telescope to someone that's never seen it, they're always like, wow, that's amazing. And then they'll say something like, it looks just like the pictures, which is quite interesting considering that's what pictures are. But So certainly Saturn uh, is fantastic, but for mind-blowingness, I like uh, the Tarantula Nebula. Uh, it's a large region of gas and dust where there are young stars being born, uh, and the radiation from those stars causes uh, the gas and dust to glow, not like reflected light, but actually fluoresce, so it glows. Uh, a bit like uh, a fluorescent light works. But the thing is, you look at it through a telescope and it's, it's quite impressive, but it's even more impressive once you realise that it's not technically in the Milky Way. Uh, it's in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which is a small satellite galaxy of the Milky Way. So compared to something like the Orion Nebula, which a lot of people know, it's not that much smaller and not that much dimmer but the thing is, it's a lot, lot further away. So if you were to take the, the tarantula galaxy and kind of bring it through space and put it where the Orion Nebula is, uh, more than likely it would be casting shadows at night and it would take up like a substantial portion of the night sky. In terms of inspiration to get into astronomy, as I mentioned before, I was, I was always fascinated with it as a kid, I had all the, you know, the books about the solar system. But the thing that really inspired me to get back into it was the original Cosmos series. Uh, it came out on DVD as a pack of DVDs. I decided to buy it and I watched through it. Um, it was the first time I'd seen it and pretty much that was what set me on the course to go back and do further study and 
really try to aim what I do towards astronomy outreach, so getting people excited or involved in astronomy. So Carl Sagan, as with probably around about two-thirds of the astronomers on the planet, was, yeah, I would say one of the great sources of inspiration for me. In terms of life uh, in the universe, I would say statistically it's almost a certainty. You're looking at Milky Way galaxy has 200 odd billion stars. The last study I saw that had a, you know, a rough average said on average there's probably about 1.6 planets per star. So you know, you're looking at 320 odd billion planets in the Milky Way uh, and then you've got around about 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe. Uh, so to suggest that like Earth is the only planet out of all of those that has life, I think uh, stretches the imagination a little bit too far. On the other hand, I don't know how common intelligent life would be. I suspect it's fairly rare just because, you know, if you look at the history of how life came about on Earth, it's not a simple process, but that's, that's speculation, you know what I mean? Like, we, we won't know until we know. This is my life.